You know, I don't really know how to say it any other way except molecular medicine 101. That's what we're going to call this, okay, Dr. RCC? Sounds good. <laughs> okay, explain to our viewers at home. We've been talking about the research that you're doing mm -hmm. here in this lab, a new program yes. for Phoenix Children's Hospital. Help us understand the work that you're doing. We start with, let's say, 100 children come in diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm they all can't be treated the same because they're not going to respond the same. What are you doing here that will help those kids respond better to treatment? You've, that is exactly hitting the nail right on the head. We have... You're a good teacher. <laughs> well, we have this um, idea from the past that we have treated those hundred children with, for instance, a type of leukemia the same way. A lot respond, a lot don't respond. And we've said, we can't figure out why. So with the kinds of technologies we have potentially available to us now, we can look at each of those individuals and their leukemias as a unique phenomenon, which we've always suspected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I aren't the same, none of us are the same, so why should our tumors be the same? Even though we call this myeloid leukemia, for instance, mm -hmm. we know that every one of us has a slightly different version of that. So we want to find out exactly what is wrong with that particular patient's leukemia versus this other particular patient's leukemia. And why should we give them both the same drug if this one's going to respond and this one isn't? So we would like to tailor that treatment according to what's wrong with their particular cancers. I almost want to call it customized treatment. So, yes, in, is, in many is that ways. What it is? But of course, we're not quite smart enough yet, and this is why we need to do some research um, in order to figure all of this out. We can't sort of customize a drug like in Star Trek yet. Right. Someday, I hope we can, but right now we have a group of drugs that we can access, like in a library, and say, well, this patient's more likely to benefit from these two drugs as opposed to these three drugs. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're going to try to test and, and target that therapy. Well, let me ask you something. We're, we're talking about treatment right now, which is so, so critical. Um, what about prevention? Does this research help in prevention yes. and cures? So cure for sure. We hope that we can improve the ability to cure patients with these diseases because if chemotherapy doesn't work, they don't have any other options. Mm -hmm. And prevention, I think we can at many levels start to do early detection, which is maybe a step after prevention. So if you knew that you are at high risk of developing a certain type of cancer, it's better to pick that up earlier rather than later. We know that it costs a lot of money and it's often not as successful to treat somebody with advanced cancer than early cancer. And ultimately, I dream that saying, sure, someday I would love to be able to vaccinate children at high risk for certain types of leukemia. We've done it for smallpox and polio. Pediatrics is where it's going to happen if it happens anywhere. So that's why you're here and that's why continued research is so very important. Research is the answer to the future. Um, doing everything like we've done is very unsatisfying and it doesn't help our patients. The only way this gets done is through research.